Hello, welcome back to Medis in Depth. Today we will be looking at the situation of the Kurds in Syria. El Monitor looks at the Kurdish parties in Syria, which are increasingly engaged in a low-scale Cold War. The new power vacuum in the Kurdish areas of Syria has led to political office closures, expulsions and demonstrations, media campaigns and border closures instead of more cooperation. As a result of tensions between Kurdistan and the Syrian Kurdish security forces started to expel, arrest and deny entry to Syria of politicians of the newly established Barzani-linked Kurdistan Democratic Party of Syria. Bashar Amin, a KDP politician, was arrested in his house in Hasake and deported to Iraq in his slippers and pyjamas on May the 16th. In a tit-for-tat response, the pro-PKK politician Nujin Yusif was imprisoned for two days and deported from Iraq to Syria by the KDP's security forces on May the 21st, despite having a residency permit for a year. Riza Altoun, a leading member of the PKK, told Al Monitor that the PKK accused the KRG of dividing Kurdistan. It shows that they don't have a concern for the national unity of the Kurds. The PYD suspects that the KDP is using a power embargo to pressure the PYD to share power with Barzani-backed parties in Syria and that this is unrelated to the security of the KRG. This Kurdish Cold War prevented the holding of a National Kurdish Congress in September of last year and the creation of a United Kurdish Administration in Syria. The PYD, which is aligned with the PKK, announced three Canton administrations in January 2014 after an agreement failed between the KDP and the PKK to have a united Kurdish voice at the Geneva II conference. But the PYD formed administrations with local Arabs, Christians and small Kurdish parties, while the Kurdish parties united in the Barzani-backed Kurdish National Council, the KNC, and joined the Western-backed Syrian National Coalition, rejecting the legitimacy of the PYD institutions on the ground. Also on the Kurds, London-based researcher Denise Chifchi wrote an article titled Radical Islamic Groups and the Dirty War on Rojava. Soon after Kurds in Syria seized power and constructed an autonomous region in the Rojava region, Al-Qaeda-affiliated radical Islamic groups, the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, the ISIS and the Al-Nusra, commenced severe attacks on Rojava. And in order to, restore, to destroy Democratic Union's party, PYD, and newly instilled Kurdish autonomy, these groups used predominantly inhumane strategies, mass killings, kidnapping, assassinations, beheading and forced evacuation of the Kurdish villages are only a few of the harsh methods they implemented against the Kurds. The writer questions why do these groups insistently attack the Kurds and have free reign of their actions in defeating the People's Protecting Units, the YPG, and remove Royava's status. Islamic groups want to create an Islamic state in Syria as they have already done so in some regions of Iraq. Creating such a state or merely a safe haven zone has instilled uh, these groups with a certain level of uh, enabling them to carry out their plan in the Middle East. The piece says it is well known these groups cannot act freely in Syria without permission for some countries in the region, namely the Sunni bloc. The main demand of this bloc is the removal of President al-Assad. This bloc wants sustaining of the Sykes-Picot Agreement of 1916, which designed the region through artificial ethnic and religious boundaries. More clearly, they reject propositions for redesigning of the Middle East in terms of the ethnic and religious realities of the region. And now we are joined by uh, Dr. Jawad Milla, President of the Kurdistan National Congress. Thank you very much for being on Mideast in Depth. Thank you very much for you, for your uh, uh, member, your uh, audio, or uh, you, uh, the television yes. watching. Dr. Milla, what do you think of the ISIS and Jabhat al-Nusra invading uh, Rojava in the Kurdish parts of Syria? The invasion of Rojava, not only these days. The invasion of Rojava it is about 1,400 years. The killing of the Kurds continued more than 1,400 years, and nobody listened to the Kurds. Now, the, 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 this fanatic, this uh, 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 aggressive Islamist attacking the Kurdish villages, it is uh, because the, now the people, they're talking about it because they have 
other uh, view for the cause of Middle East, uh, the new uh, era coming during this last three years, uh, the uh, revolutions everywhere, and uh, the, the Kurdish cause coming a uh, little bit uh, forward. Yes. And how would you assess the rift between Kurdish parties in Syria? Uh, they are fighting over power, of course. But how would that affect their plan to gain an autonomous Kurdish region in Syria? Uh, I've been uh, last year. I've been in Syria. I've been in Qamishlo city. I saw what they are doing there in uh, Qamishli. It is a very good step, but it is not enough. Uh, should little bit uh, go more uh, faster and uh, stronger because we are a nation without a state, should announce a Kurdish state there. Because if they don't announce their Kurdish state until this uh, conflict finished, they will never get anything. Now the Iraqi Kurds, they announced their federalism. Mm -hmm. Now the, the, the Maliki attacking the Kurdistan region in Iraq. Every day, they, uh, he, uh, Maliki sent his army a uh, couple of months ago to Kirkuk and threatened the Kurds. So uh, federalism, uh, autonomy is very good steps for Iraqi Kurds, for Syrian Kurds, but it is not enough because yes. we'll stay under threaten mm -hmm. of these regimes. Yes. Dr. Milla, President of the Kurdistan National Congress, thank you again for your participation. Thank you very much for you. And for more updates, please visit levant.tv. Thanks for watching and bye for now.